Hey everyone, my name is Afton Brizoni. This is the Changemaker Conversations interview series. I'm really excited to be here today with Kim Keith, who's the principal consultant for an awesome creative agency that she runs. And I'm actually gonna hand it right over to Kim and let her tell you about you know, her business and a little about herself. So welcome Kim and I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Hello everyone, Afton, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, like Afton said, I currently run my own creative and consulting agency. I am a professionally trained graphic and interactive media designer and also an experienced performance marketer with over 10 years experience in that space. Uh, and what I do is I, I really help entrepreneurs and new business owners build a branded system around their business so they can attract their ideal clients. So in a nutshell, that's what I do. Awesome. I love it. Thank you, Kim. And you know, that's so important. And I know we're going to talk about that more throughout this interview, but it's not just about getting clients, people, it's about right. getting the right clients. And so that is, right. you know, that's really what um, one of Kim's areas of specialty. And so on that note, right. Kim, you know, I'd love to hear about what are some of the most common challenges that your clients face? Mm -hmm. um, and how do you help them with that? Hmm. Okay, so when new entrepreneurs and business owners come to me, they have this great business or a great business idea that they've literally poured their heart and soul into. And what they're looking for is a brand and identity that reflects that same passion and vision. And because that's not their zone of genius, they're looking for help. So these people um, usually want more than a quick logo to slap on a t-shirt. They're looking for more of a strategy to help them guide their future. Uh, oftentimes they don't know how to talk to or, or even find their ideal clients. Um, they sometimes don't even know who their ideal clients are or, you know, how to speak to them. They struggle a lot with messaging and knowing what content to put out there to draw in their ideal buyers. And on the visual side of it, they really just want a professional polished logo, but have no idea where to start. So those are some of the reasons and challenges that cause people to seek someone like myself out. Um, in terms of how I help them, so like the Coles Notes version is really that I provide them a roadmap to help them guide their, their business. Um, I have an in-depth six-step process that I go through with all of my clients, um, and it starts with a discovery phase phase really to, to figure out the scope and breadth of the project, but also to assess, you know, what are the client's expectations? What are they trying to achieve? What are their goals and, and, and finalizing timelines and things like that? Um, I go through a branding sort of exercise with them where all of the questions that we go through um, are really trying to help me understand what kind of brand they want to have? What, how, what are they envisioning? I'm trying to get inside their head. Um, this really makes sure that we're on the same page and there's no you know, miscommunications between us. Um, and it keeps us kind of in collaboration the entire time. Um, I switch gears then and I jump into a research phase. Now, this phase I find is sometimes or, or a lot of times skipped, but it's super important. Um, so the research phase is where I will dive in and find out everything I can about their target market or their niche. Um, try to find consumer insights that will give us a competitive advantage, um, but also looking at the competitive landscape overall, as well as their industry and everything that we do in this phase, the goal is to find areas of opportunities for us to differentiate as well as, you know, pick up on any best practices that, you know, uh, some of their competitors may already be leveraging. Okay, um, then we get into the fun stuff and we start looking at like proposed design direction. So before I even jump in and start physically the de designing the logo, I present um, directions that I'd like to take the design. So it's a visual download of all of the previous phases because I use that to inform the visuals. 
Um, and I present that to the client in the way of either a mood board or a stylescape to show them their color palettes, their font systems, you know, imagery. And so they get an idea of the vibe and where I think we should take it based on all the research. And, you know, once they sign off, it's only then that we actually start designing the logo. And by following this kind of process, I find there's very few disconnects or surprises at the end of the process. Um, and then once all of the design work is done, um, the client is armed with, you know, if branding was part of it as well, so brand messaging, they get actually a brand messaging playbook, which has all of their messaging in there. So mission, vision, um, taglines, brand promise, but also their anthem, which is like their battle cry for their business. So super fun doing that. And I give them a one page, I call it a brand marketing script or cheat sheet, um, which helps them when they're writing copy or captions for social media to make sure that they're hitting certain points um, and not forgetting things like call to action and things like that, just to make sure that they're putting content and copy that will be impactful and get them the conversions that they need, right? So they get that and they get the research, all of that great research. And of course they get the logo files, those physical files that I delivered to them. So you can see how at the end, they're really armed with something that is going to give them or make them feel empowered to move forward and promote and grow their business. Because I find a lot of times they come to me and they're just confused, they're overwhelmed, you know, branding and, and um, uh, design and marketing is not their zone of genius. So I take them from confused and overwhelmed to confident and calculated because they now have this kind of guide, this roadmap to, to guide them forward if that makes sense. I yeah. love that. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, it's so important to do this really robust work up front because mm -hmm. then, like you said, they, they come from that place of not really knowing, you know, how it all comes together to be able to confidently execute that every time they don't have to start from scratch. They can refer to the playbooks you've created. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that is huge value. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it is a common challenge. I think because people, you know, they don't really realize how much goes into branding and, and how important it is to lay that foundation. Right. Absolutely. Well, I guess actually that brings me to my next question, which is mm -hmm. what are some things about branding? Um, and, you know, we can expand this to marketing more broadly yeah. that people are often surprised to learn, you know, as you go through this process with them that you wish that more people knew. Yeah. So a lot of times people will come to me for a logo design, but they won't have that brand strategy flushed out. They think that branding is just the visual. So there's a lot of education that needs to be done there because branding encompasses basically the way you leave people feeling after an interaction with you. So yes, you know, visuals play a role in there, but so does your messaging. So does your customer service. It's basically your whole ecosystem that you're trying to build and you're trying to have consistency across your entire ecosystem. But that's very difficult when you don't, when you haven't flushed out that strategy. You know what I mean? So that's one of the main, I guess, myths or misconceptions that people have that I, I face time and time again. Um, I completely agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, another thing that I hear that's kind of um, adjacent to that is that, oh, Kim, branding is not important until I'm growing. It's, it's too big of an expense. You know, I'll do it later. Um, but in actuality, whether you invest in branding or not uh, from the beginning, like you have a brand. If you're out there on social, if you're putting content anywhere into the world, you have a brand. The difference is that you're letting your audience dictate what your brand is by not taking control of it. So your brand has the ability to account for 50% of your company's value. Um, and it's important and relevant at every single stage. It's tied to things like brand equity, um, your credibility, 
Um, it gives you consistency. So it actually simplifies things for you. It does not complicate them. The way running without a plan is much more difficult than running with a plan. And, and people forget that sometimes, um, but it also creates loyalty. Of course, that awareness factor. And it just overall, it's gonna bring your, your overwhelm and frustration down like a hundred notches by having some kind of strategy. So that would be the second thing that I would say that I run into or misconception is that it's not important that you could do it later. Um, and then the third thing is more on the marketing side um, and something I see on websites in social media posts is um, businesses think that they are the hero of their story. Yes. <laughs> They are not. You are the guide. You are the guide in the story. Your customers, your ideal clients are the heroes. So I see a lot of me, me, me focused content. Like this is what I do. We offer award winning workouts. Nobody flipping cares if they're award winning. What people care about is the transformation that you can provide them. People want to be taken somewhere. They want to know that they're going to where they're starting is not where they're going to end up. And that's what you have to show them. And the way you show them that is by being the guide, not by focusing on these are all my services, me, 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 me. You need to flip that narrative and really make it about them. So that would be, those would kind of be the, the three that I notice most often, I'd say. Those are huge. And yeah, mm -hmm. I really hope that everybody was taking notes because it <laughs> is very important to keep those things in mind. And it even, you know, I think that even when you do that for a living or when you do it on a regular basis, like as you were saying those things, it makes me want to, you know, make sure my own content is, is as customer centric mm -hmm. as it should be, because it is really easy to get away from it. So I think, you know, mm -hmm. just keeping all the things that you've said in mind is, is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, a couple other, like, all, actually, those were all fantastic tips, but I'm wondering, do you have any other sort of key tips that you would share for viewers to implement when it comes to their own company's brand? When it comes to your own company's brand, I'd say number one, figure out who you're actually targeting um, and niche it down. Uh, if you want to differentiate and really be known as a specialist in whatever space that you reside in, you have to stop taking a generalist approach and trying to kind of please the, the masses. So um, if you need help doing that, I just so happen to have a free niche statement guide on my website. So you can go and download that. It will walk you through the process of really zeroing in on who your ideal clients are. And it will even help you put together your positioning statement. So I provide you with that formula at the end. So definitely check that out. Um, the second thing I would say is, of course, if you have budget to do so, get your brand strategy flushed out by a professional. Um, it will be an invaluable resource for you down the road. Now, I realize that branding is an investment. I'm under no delusions that, you know, it's a stretch, especially during a pandemic. So if you can't manage it right now, just, just do this. Just think of your brand like a living, breathing person? How would they look? How would they talk? What would their tone of voice be? Would their personality be? How would they behave? What do they believe in? And start to really flush these things out and, and, and change that narrative in your mind of thinking that, the, you know, branding is just assets and commodities. It's a person, because once you start thinking of your brand as a living, breathing person, your content becomes a little easier. And then your audience will start thinking of them, of your brand like a person. And that's ultimately what you want. Okay. And I've done some posts on how to do this as well. So you can check out my Instagram for some cues and, and help to do this as well. Um, and the third thing, the third thing would probably be to be consistent. So it doesn't matter if you get a great brand developed, you have to be consistent with the application of it across all of your channels. So, you know, social, website, 
um, press releases, LinkedIn, wherever, wherever you're pushing out content, your brand needs to be woven throughout all of the assets. So when people fall on your content, they know right away, oh, this is an Afton Brazilian piece. This is Scribe National piece because of X, Y, and Z. Um, could be the way you talk, could be the tone, it could be the colors you use, could be a variety of things, but you want that consistency. So I would say those would be kind of my top um, three would be niching down, um, flushing out that brand strategy, uh, and then being consistent with it. Yes, I think a lot of the time, um, well, even with myself, you know, people are reluctant to niche. I've been reluctant to niche, but but as soon as you do it, you really start to see the results. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, the strategy, I think, um, I certainly couldn't argue with that in any way, shape, or form. It's essential. And I do mm -hmm. think the consistency is something that gets forgotten about a lot at the end. So it's really mm -hmm. important to like bookend that with actually being consistent, mm -hmm. especially when you've put in all of that important work. You want to make sure it's showcased through all your marketing channels. Right, right. Now, you mentioned a couple of uh, things, which is going to lead me into where I want to go next. So I would love for you to show, you know, tell people how they can learn more about what you offer, as well as get in touch with you. So, you know, if there's any um, flagship programs you want to mention and websites, social, all of that, uh, mm -hmm. I would love for, you know, to how to share that with everybody. Great. So if you want to get hold of me, the best place to go is my website. Um, it's really easy. So it's my initials, KK. GTA as in greater Toronto area design at uh, dot com and then that KK GTA design is my handle for all social as well so very easy um, to remember uh, and you can find me on Instagram Facebook uh, as well I'm very very active on on Instagram um, the most uh, so you may want to check me out there but those awesome. would be places yeah okay well that is perfect so yeah, everybody go and do that. Um, and then Kim, you know, is there anything else that you wanted to add before we wrap up today? Oh, I don't know. I think we covered quite a bit in a short amount we of did. Um, It was really great speaking with you guys. Like I said, I have a lot of resources on my website and also through social media. So definitely check that out. I have a couple of branding products that will be hitting the market in the next month or two. Uh, both free and available for purchase, all revolving around helping entrepreneurs um, be empowered to create their branding. So definitely keep in touch for that stuff because I'm really excited about that. But other than that, it was this was great. It was great talking with you. And um, yeah, we'll keep in touch. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Kim. I think, you know, really uh, concrete and actionable things that people can implement today and yeah, so I just, I do really value your time and thank you for coming on. Um, so everybody, I will be back in two weeks with another Changemaker interview. Take care.